as I have already been living in Europe for more than six years and recently I will be receiving the EU long term residence permit which was approved back in December uh, like a month back and I am expected to receive it by this month end by the month end of January. So I thought like why not share my experiences of living in wonderful, uh, having a wonderful life in Europe and the facilities that you get here, the work life balance and everything else uh, about the life in Europe, specifically focusing on the quality of life and all these different facilities and benefits that you get by staying here. So hello everyone, my name is Sambit Praraj and I have this channel called Sambit PhD where I always share my experiences about studying and living in Netherlands, Europe uh, with the help of my experiences and also different interviews and podcasts. So recently I was listening to this nice interesting podcast, the link of which you will find in the video description itself. Uh, they have podcasts in different places like Spotify and other places so you can go and check it out. So I saw that it was about Indian student mobility to EU for higher education and while listening to it I found that they said something which you all must listen to. You will get to know about the various student mobility aspects, visa processes, pre-departure and post arrival challenges, scholarship opportunities, student life in Europe and post study opportunities as well as job prospects in Europe after you complete your masters. So all of these things are covered in the podcast. And this podcast was produced in support of EU uh, with collaboration from Government of India. And therefore, I can guarantee that uh, the information provided in this podcast is extremely reliable and from most of the trusted sources. So I, I my friends, go and check it out. You will find the link in the video description itself. It is featuring views. That is why it is very important. It is featuring views from different uh, current and prospective international students, government officials in India and EU, international organizations, selected European universities and also from student mobility experts. Uh, the podcast is a knowledge product targeting Indian universities, uh, Indian students who wish to study in the countries of the European Union. So I, I must say it was a great lesson overall which provides you a comprehensive overview of all these aspects. And I, I must recommend you to go and have a listen to it. So this main video will is basically motivated by my own experiences and also by the experiences that I got from this podcast, which kind of sums it up in a very nice way. Europe is a continent of 21st century to study and live. As mentioned in the podcast, the greatest advantage and convenience is affordability, mobility, exposure and options. You get a lot of options in different member EU countries. Uh, moving on to the second point, the cost factors. There are a lot of affordable options for students, uh, including the free education options in different universities in Germany and Finland, uh, and also many scholarship opportunities in different EU member states. We will be going into the details of that and also there will be some links regarding the websites that you can use to find these opportunities in the description below and I'll be mentioning it throughout the video. So the uh, work-life balance that you like you cannot stress it much like work-life balance is so good in you. You can ask anyone who has ever come to Europe. Uh, if they stay even for a year, they will tell you like how good is the work life balance even for PhDs because I'm doing a PhD. I'm almost going to end my PhD in one or two months. So it is like a job here. So we also experience that benefit of the work life balance and this work life balance gives you so much opportunities if you have a family or uh, even if you are a single person to give time to your other activities, your friends and your creative part and everything. So it's really, really good. There are already over 50,000 Indian uh, students in Europe. Uh, it was also mentioned uh, in the podcast and in Netherlands and Germany only I know because I work with those researchers and in Netherlands I've already stayed more than six years. Uh, there are like the dominant two dominant populations of the international population is Indian and Chinese. The main important perspectives that I got from the podcast, uh, it's very valuable and relevant for this topic of life in Europe.
is that there are plenty of affordable education op options as I mentioned before and also for non-EU students it is very attractive because they are affordable and many free options are also available many scholarships are available so it is especially attractive for the Indian middle class because uh, you know like studying abroad is really, really expensive so when you have so many options then you can decide like which one is best fit for you depending on your budget and again lifestyle work-life balance these things cannot be ignored anywhere whenever you discuss about life in Europe go and ask anyone any alumni connect on LinkedIn uh, you can find a lot of alumni and as I mentioned about PhD so PhD in most European countries be it Germany Netherlands Belgium Switzerland Norway uh, Sweden the Nordic countries you get free uh, paid PhD by paid PhD I mean like uh, you get a salary and it's like a job you get a work contract all the work life balance all the opportunities holidays bonus everything and you also at the same time do your research get everything so you can check my playlists on my channel I have mentioned this repeatedly the PhD here is like a job and the facilities the opportunities the travel uh, budget that you have for traveling for international conferences uh, the atmosphere that you get is really really huge so I'm promoting PhD because my experience for the last four or five years has been doing this PhD a very positive experience I must say so regarding job I think you can connect with some alumni from LinkedIn go and watch the podcast you will find different views so also the expert views in the podcast mentioned that uh, France and Germany have set a target of 16 to 20 percent increase in Indian students and also same in Scandinavia so this is really really huge my friends um, perception of Indian students as I heard in the podcast is that uh, the perception of Indian students in Europe uh, is that they work very hard and they come with really good quality educational background so there are a lot of Indian alumni I know um, and through my channel you can also find many alumni because I bring in alumni from different parts of Europe and do interview sessions there are already interviews on my channel on Norway Sweden uh, Denmark so yeah so there will be plenty more coming Germany um, and you can connect with them also on LinkedIn LinkedIn is a very powerful tool to connect all these global alumni and go and ask them if you decide to come to a specific EU member state and yeah student mobility and people to people connectivity has become a focus area for India and EU this was specifically highlighted in the podcast and there are several support initiatives to support this in place study research etc so also EU and India share a huge hyper diversity sharing culture history uh, you can go to the podcast to listen more details about it and moving on to the final few points the main point apart from work-life balances um, and affordability is the intra-EU border free mobility as you might know that there, there, there are these 26 Schengen countries so once you get a visa to any one place in EU be it for tourism or be it for internship travel study you can very easily move from suppose Germany to Netherlands Netherlands to Belgium so these all these 26 Schengen countries provide border free entry exit everything throughout for work for example I can give you my example I live in the south of Netherlands go and check Maastricht because my place is not that famous I live in Valkenburg so it's very close to the border of Germany and Belgium and sometimes what I do is like on weekends because Germany the grocery is cheaper because of less taxes so on weekends sometimes I go to Aachen which is like 20 kilometers from my place half an hour by train or if you want to go in bike be adventurous uh, and buy groceries so uh, also for my research sometimes I have day trips to Belgium or Germany and come back in the same day so it's very convenient and easy to have this intra EU border free mobility and the podcast mentions about the EU resource website this website is very very helpful because I knew about it but I kind of forgot and when I heard it in the podcast then I remember like this helped me a lot uh, many times when I want something reliable unbiased information so this website is I can 
put it in the description below and also maybe in the screen here it provides detailed information about studying in all eu countries it's the europa.eu eceuropa.eu uh, so it's a one-stop resource which will provide you detailed info about uh, studying student journey to eu it has objective unbiased info so other individual eu member states websites can be also helpful so there are many other websites like dard.de dard is like a holy grail for germany you can go to dard.de slash en for english version provide every information about studying in germany just like that you have study in holland.nl for netherlands campus france uh, norg dot uh, something norwegian website for jobs all these websites i'll mention in the video description itself and uh, yeah uh, and also your access.eu if you are working in my field any research based position or uh, academic positions you can find on your access.eu which is a very resourceful option and yeah so again going back to the mobility student mobility is a priority area in eu india mobility corridor so this was mentioned in this podcast that there are several initiatives uh, of the eu and the government of india to support students and researchers they have developed this uh, madad m-a-d-a-d uh, online portal which allows indian students to register online when they are abroad and this provides grievance redressal support to students and also the Indian embassy to track and support you during emergencies. For example, this was a huge emergency now like COVID for a longer time. So yeah, so it's like you, it makes you feel at home even if you are really far away from India. So they take so much care of you. And obviously many people will have questions like, uh, if I come here, will I have any culture shock or challenges? Uh, like that I have mentioned many, I've made many videos on that topic. So yeah, obviously you will have some challenges. Uh, maybe you need some time to adjust and get used to the environment. So you can solve this together in groups. Uh, personally, my experience, uh, I have lived in some parts for days also like Germany, Netherlands. Uh, Belgium and uh, if you sp speak really nicely with people even if they don't understand your language uh, they also respond you very nicely once you speak to them nicely so my experience is really positive so I think with time you will also get used to it like the different rules different uh, systems and everything in different EU member states it should not be a big issue for a long time and moving to the final point which you might be thinking like he's talking about life but he has never mentioned anything about jobs so job prospects uh, one thing i can say like it's difficult to generalize but there are a lot of plenty of opportunities because recently there was some discussion i read also on quora and also the, it was mentioned in the podcast that eu is facing facing a shortage of skilled work skilled labors so they need a lot of skilled labor so there are a lot of vacancies you can obviously get a lot of options there and apart from that uh, indian students in eu uh, have a period of nine months minimum after their graduation to look for a job or to set up a business and along with this flexibility uh, several eu member states also offer a stay back or job seeker visa uh, for up to one to two years apart from this so it depends on the country it varies from one to two years these support measures are extremely helpful uh, for indian students to find post-study opportunities in europe if you are worried about your long-term uh, goals and wish to know more about post-study opportunities then in eu then you must listen to that podcast uh, again you will find the link in the video description so yeah it's a continent with huge opportunities europe and you basically with one visa of any one EU member state, you can travel to the whole continent. And I hope that you get some information from this video. Uh, do share with your friends. Don't forget to smash the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Till next video, goodbye from India. Peace.